Hey, welcome everybody. So today I'm talking about the body. Now, I have been thinking a lot about our bodies and how we treat them. And when I have my coaching clients, I talk to them if they choose to, if they want to look at, you know, their body and the foods that they eat. Then we go over, you know, a list of the foods that they eat and that they like. And I to ask them, how does your body feel when you eat this certain food? And then I get insight on the foods that their body likes, wants, or needs. And it's, so it's channeled information and I'm also able to see inside their body. So here's an example. Just a while ago, someone who was in my physical presence was um, getting sick, kind of. And I got the message, I got the downloaded message, you know, from above that when our digestive tract is clogged with old food and junk and it actually coats the the uh, inside of our intestinal tract like the lining right it there's bacteria in there and it's basically rotting food i know it sounds gross but there are some foods that are easy to digest and some foods that aren't so example meat i I heard or read this somewhere. It takes about two days for red meat to move through your body, and you have you're meant to drink lots of water to help your body digest red meat. Now, if you understand digestion, you understand that you have stomach acids that are really, really powerful, and they can basically eat through anything. So, if you drink water or something with your meals, you actually are slowing down the digestive process, and you're also weakening your stomach acid. So, it's best. And this was told me to me by a naturopathic doctor years ago. It's best to drink water away from your meals. And if you have to drink water, you can drink water before your meal, but do your best to keep away from imbibing in liquids while you eat. And I heard from above, it's okay actually to drink red wine. Red wine aids in digestion. They said about six ounces. I was saying, obviously you don't wanna feed it to children because that's just not a good idea. But later on when people are old enough to understand that it's a digestive aid and they're saying also bitters are good as well but you're meant to if you do indulge in that you are meant to see feel how it feels in your body right so when you have something your body will do several things it'll feel really good and you won't get bloated right you won't have that big oh it feels like my stomach has increased inside like a like a rising um bread dough <laughs> or oh my god I feel so good so example in the morning usually I get up and I have lemon water right away I take half a lemon I squeeze it with a citrus reamer into a cup I put in cool cold water like room temperature water and then I fill it with hot so I have a nice blend of warm water and I drink that right away and I wait 30 minutes I notice that if I don't do that, I end up looking, my skin ends up looking like not really healthy. And right now my skin looks really nice. I've been doing the lemon water for quite a while. Sometimes though, I find that my teeth actually can't handle all that acidity. So I'll stop the lemon water for a couple days and then I'll go in. And then Spirit told me it's good for me to have it every third day. So take two days off for me and then have it on the third day. Why would you drink lemon water? Because it cleans your liver. So if you have a fatty liver, a fatty liver can't actually process fats because your liver is meant to process fats. But if your liver is fatty, it actually is overworked and underpaid. <laughs> and so it can't process fat. So if you clean your liver with lemon water, and this is um, doc the medical medium, Anthony William says this in his first book, uh, medical medium is the name of the book that if you drink lemon water every day it will help clean your liver and i play this game with my body and you could do it too it's kind of fun so i'll go okay mind tell me how many what percentage i'll do this with cancer cells what percentage of cancer cells do i have in my body and i heard right now two percent so if you understand what cancer cells are they're like they're the cells that are caused by free radicals so you could get free radicals from your environment microwave foods any food that has like is a carcinogen or has been you know like barbecued meat is not that great for you right it has carcinogens in it so also feed food with nitrates oh they said not really so they said nitrates are 50 50 and they said so i channeled like i have a food guide they're like made a joke here canada food guide so i have a food guide that tells me yes the um, truths and untruths about food so this food guide said nitrates are 50 percent part of the problem but they said it's also people's mentality and if they think that if they believe and they said this is in that book you are the placebo by dr joe what a fantastic book please read it if you haven't read it oh my god first three pages 
will change how you view illness. So I'm not going to tell you about it because you're supposed to read it yourself. So anyways, what you believe will, you know, it's like that saying they said in the secret, what you believe you will conceive. So lots of us even aren't aware that we have these deep seated beliefs that were fed to us when we were young and it causes us to think a certain way. For example, I know a lot of people who go to the doctor and if the doctor tells them they have this, this or this, they say, oh my God, I have this. I don't think that way at all. And a, year, a few years ago, I don't know, five years ago, I went to, I got a new doctor because I moved into the Stony Plain area. Got a new doctor, my son and I went to the doctor. I got a physical and I had high blood cholesterol, the bad kind. And so she said, you know, you know or was it high, high cholesterol? So she said, you need to get that down and I'll see you in three months. And if it's not down, I'm gonna put you on medication. Well, one, seriously, I don't take medication. And I know why, because my body doesn't agree with pharmaceuticals. It doesn't like drugs. They don't do anything for it. I had like, um, what did I have when I, I had um, some uh, bone transplants um, to get uh, implants in my, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, this is weird, in my family, on my dad's side, I was missing two tooth right here. So I had to get bridges and then I had a cavity. So I went to this really cool doctor and he did bone implants right here. And then I had one down here. So I could, so I could get, cause the bone had deteriorated from having that bridge there so long. So I don't mind having that kind of stuff put in whatever, but where am I going with this? Like, hello. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, I seriously, I had a brain fart and I'm so sorry. It'll come back to me. So, oh yeah, so I don't, this is where I was going. So I don't take medications and I don't take painkillers. So I got antibiotics for that to make sure it stayed healthy because I had a foreign substance put in my mouth, right? And lots of times our bodies will reject that. Especially someone else's bones, hey, weird. I know, it was weird. I'll have to, I don't know if I told anyone this on my, any of my YouTube videos, but I had like the vision of whose bones I got put in my mouth when during the whole process, it was so weird. So then, I was given antibiotic and a painkiller. I think they were Tylenol twos or so. I don't can't remember what they were. So I was taking the antibiotics, but I felt like I didn't have any problem with infection or anything like that. But the painkillers didn't work. The painkillers did not work. So I might as well have just been eating like the container that the pills came in because I had an amazing friend at that time. Well, two, I still have them. I asked them to, I texted them and I said, oh my God, I'm having so many problems right now. I'm in so much pain. My face is like uh, huge and bruised and everything from that, this uh, the implant I had up here. Um, implant, not a, the bone transplant. So I asked them to send me healing and oh my goodness, that, that energy that they sent me is what relieved the pain. But I was in pain for quite a few days. But when I took those painkillers, nothing happened. So I might as well not have taken them at all to quit. Simply antibiotics, I does like they, I don't, not only do I not need them, but they're not doing anything. But I'm so sensitive, I can tell. Because remember, I always tell you guys, make sure you meditate. Because when you meditate, you connect with your super conscious that's up there. You connect with your subconscious that's down here. And you control your conscious mind that is a busy body. Your conscious mind is a total, you know what? not a nice thing it's good sometimes but lots of times it runs interference we call it squirrel brain um, monkey brain you know it's like it's like it's just so you want to slow it down right and when you do you get control over the subconscious which can be which can be positive or negative subconscious isn't always bad and um your super conscious which is always wonderful your super conscious mind it's amazing it's like you are exalted i heard and they said that they're glad i'm talking with super conscious mind because a lot of people aren't aware that they were created in the likeness of god in that they are innately good and it's our life experiences that make us not so good how we're programmed from you know zero to seven and bruce lipton talks about that in his video about epigenetics so getting back to my thing about your body is uh Pay attention to what you feed it, okay, in terms of like physical food and how your body utilizes that food, that physical food. I read somewhere as you get older, 
your body needs more protein. And I, I know that's evident for me, and I'm not a big protein eater. I really have to force myself to eat a lot of protein. And I went vegan, oh, well, probably seven months ago now, eight months ago, whatever, and I found my body really likes it. And it doesn't meet meat, it doesn't meet, it doesn't miss meat at all, it doesn't even care for it. So it's just a win for me. And But the only problem I have had is I haven't been, my protein intake hasn't been high enough, so I have to really push it on that. And the other thing your body needs is exercise. And you have to decide what kind of exercise it wants. So lots of times I get up in the morning, I have my lemon water, I run on my treadmill. and. Now that I've, I've released a lot of weight, that excess weight, I don't have to work out as hard. But let me tell you, when I was working out really hard, it was like cardio in the morning, then weights at the gym, then cardio in the, in the afternoon or the evening to burn off that fat because cardio builds, burns fat and weights build muscle. So those are things you need to remember when you build an exercise program for your body. And you know, if you do, or not yet, when you do, you will love your body and you will love yourself again. And you, if you don't, lots of people love themselves now, but I didn't, which is part of my journey, like from when I started last year. And you will feel amazing. And you know what? You are going to age so well when you feed your body the right stuff, the right food. When you, like, when you tweak your diet enough and you find what you're meant to have and how your body takes it in and how it utilizes it. Now I'm supposed to talk about your intestinal tract. So if you're all clogged up and you don't, you know, go number two several times a day, you got problems because here's what happens. If you're not going several times a day, number two, numero dois, that's Portuguese, you will have waste that's building up in your intestinal tract and it will make you sick. And you'll have a big old pooch, like you'll look like you're pregnant, but you're not. At men and women so if you have a big pooch and you push on it and it's hard that's poop that's a lots of poop in your it's undigested food that's stuck in your intestinal tract and breads are really bad for helping coat your intestinal tract and acting like glue if you ever made that glue you know from flour and water now you know why it's not always so good to eat bread but there's a remedy for that so you can decide that you want to add a certain kind of fiber that will push that stuff out of your intestinal tract and it binds to it and it pushes it out. I use psyllium husk fiber and it's, you just buy it, it's just like the husk from psyllium. And you just buy it and then I put two tablespoons of it in the glass and then I pour warm, like room temperature water over it. I sit, let it sit for half an hour and it gels, so it's like a jelly and I drink it. I make sure that I drink lots of water during the day, the day, the day that I do that and I will, Make sure I don't have a lot of food around the time I take it. So I'll do lemon water, wait 30 minutes, do psyllium husk and uh, fiber that's been sitting for 30 minutes in water. And then I'll drink lots of water. And my goodness, you should see how it cleans out your intestinal tract. It's amazing. You do have to drink lots of water. And if you don't, you'll feel really uncomfortable. Like you'll feel like you have, you're full up to here and then the food won't you won't be very happy when you eat you know food or a heavier meal or something like that after that so it's a good thing to do it by itself um, when i do green drinks in my blender i'll put that in and i let it sit and gel for 30 minutes and oh my goodness you feel so good and you'll notice like a uh, change in the texture of your skin you'll notice that it looks healthier and cleaner and brighter and the green stuff will help give you the nutrients that you need and you know if your intestinal tract isn't clogged with all that goop they're telling me your body can actually utilize the nutrients better when you have a clean intestinal tract, okay? So, I also want you to pay attention to how does it feel when you do something. So, I've been running since I was in my 20s. I used to play soccer on a soccer team, but I started running because I, um, there's this guy in this town where I lived, Grand Prairie, and, <laughs> I still remember his name, Blair Burrow. So he, I would see him running around town at about 4.30 every day. And he literally ran around the whole town of Grand Prairie. Like you could see him running every single day and he ran for miles. And I knew his girlfriend later, years later, or about that time or something like that. And she said, yeah, he runs like that so he can eat whatever he wants. And I was like, oh, what a great idea. So I started running because I wanted to eat whatever I wanted. And you know what, because I believed that, it worked. So I worked up to running for an hour. So here's how I did it. I found that I could run for five minutes without being winded. So I started with five minutes. 
Then the next time I ran, the next day I ran for six minutes and then I ran for seven minutes and then I ran for eight minutes and then I ran for 10 minutes. And that was a continual run without stopping and I wasn't winded. So if you aren't a runner and you wanna become a runner, start with one minute. Just start with one minute running and then the next day go two minutes and then go three minutes and build it up like that because your body will build up the strength that it needs. And if you find that your joints are sore, then add weight training in there because weight training will allow your body to feel so much stronger and it won't hurt when you run. I started weight training last year and I really, really wanted to run when I was doing that, but my knees were so sore, my hips were so sore, and I just felt too heavy and it was heavy. But one day, Spirit told me, ah, oh, you should, you should. No, they just, they ordered me around. They said, run, uh, they're on my guides run on the treadmill for two minutes. So I did, oh my God, it felt so good. And then they said, walk for one. And then run for two and then walk for one. So I did that. And I did that for like two miles. And when I was done, I felt so good. So I did that for quite a while. I don't know, maybe two weeks, something like that. Three weeks, 20 days, I hear. And then they said, just run now. So I did, I started running and I ran straight for 20 minutes and I wasn't winded, I wasn't sore and I felt great. And that was from getting my body into shape, getting it strong enough to be able to run again because I love running, like I really know that and, and I feel it. Like when my body runs, it feels really good. So for tonight, tonight, today when I came home from work, I thought, oh my God, it's so beautiful. I'm gonna take my horse for a walk and he, Oh, his feet have splits in them, so I have this idea. I have these back on track boots, and they're, um, they have like special fabric that helps move the energy in areas where it's kind of stuck, stiff or sore. So I thought, put the boots on, I'm gonna take him for a run. And what I can see when I put those boots on, I can see actually those boots, and he's really sensitive. Those boots actually stimulate the energy, so I can see white light going through his leg down into his feet. And I know when I continue doing this that I'm going to help remove the weird energy that seems to like blow at the bottom of the feet. It's not, and it only started when I moved to this place like five years ago. So it's the, the energy of this area and it's causing a problem for him because no matter what I feed him for supplements, whatever the splits are always there. So I know when I work with these back on track boots and I, I'm running beside him, I can see the back on track boots clearing that, I'm just gonna call it weird energy, from his feet and he likes them and he, it feels good. I, I can hear him thinking or feeling, oh, this feels so good. That's what he said when I put on his back on track blanket up back on his back when, actually I borrowed one first to see how he would be uh, with it, how it would affect his energy and he was having chiropractic treatments at the time and I found he really liked that blanket and I so I started using it I bought one and then I started using it I'd walk him for a half an hour before the farrier came so that it would help his back end because his back end was really stiff and he just really loves that blanket so you know they're pricey like they're, it's like I think it's I don't know a couple hundred bucks for the blanket but it's worth its weight in gold and the whole idea of the back on track products is that they work best when whoever is wearing that product is moving. So I put the boots on, take it for a walk and run, put the blanket on, take it for a walk. Um, I have back on track socks that I use when I run and I really like them. They make, uh, uh, they make um, people clothing too. So it's definitely a product that you might wanna try out if you have a sore and achy body and use it when you exercise. So the other portion of this video I want to talk about Mother Earth's body, but they said not yet. They said to talk more about back on track products. So they said it was, okay, this is, this is interesting because I get downloads like this. They said it was invented by like a physicist who understood energy and the weaving, the certain way that fabric is woven will cause an energetic surge in the body of a physical presence. Oh my God, the dendic. I can feel the tingle of awareness. This is really cool. So when they came out with this product, at first people, this one, like this is just the information from up there, right? People, they said, poo-pooed it. They said, oh, that's nonsense. That doesn't work. How can that work? But those um, harmonizer rings that Slim Sperling made, it's the same thing. He made uh, two pieces of metal and he twisted them together. So they're twisted, right? One around the other. 
and into a ring and when you um, point that ring at something it actually clears the energy of what you ever you pointed at it. It could be like um, bad weather in the sky or something like that or it could be um, you could stand in it or you could put a jug of water inside the ring and it will actually create positive energy and it dis it releases the negative energy, the stuck energy. So I have charge and release rings that do the same thing. In example, I used that release ring for a piece of quartz crystal and I left it in there for several days because I've been using that quartz crystal forever and never really cleaned it out, like really cleaned it. I would leave it out on a full moon and I would charge it up the next day in the sun and that was okay, but it never really seemed um, clean or as powerful. And I use it, I use it in Reiki treatments on a table. I use them in my distant healings. If I have weird energy in my truck, I put the crystal in my truck. <laughs> and even if I forget to put the crystal in the truck, I imagine that crystal is under the seat. So it's the energy of the crystal that's under the seat. And then it clears the weird energy out of there. So um, I put that crystal, the quartz crystal, it's big, it's about this big. I put it in the release ring for several days and then when I heard it was done, I heard in my head, I put it into the charge ring. So it's balanced, right? Release the negative energy and then put it in the charge ring and it charges. So I used that last night in a healing session for a client. She purchased my special deal on right now for healing sessions for uh, several hundred dollars instead of a, a session. and. So they, those healings are meant to be every seven days, this person gets a healing and then I send them notes after the healing. So I used that in the healing last night and oh my goodness, that healing was such a wonderful healing, but that crystal, when I held it in my hands, it felt so clean and so bright and so beautiful. So that body of the crystal was altered in a, excellent way and that was just with those char those charge and release rings well release and charge rings i should say so now they said i can talk about mother earth's body so you know i i have been a lover of this planet forever i feel like i've always been really connected to the trees and and like the forests and like the little people in the trees and the plants and the animals and the fairies like everything in this on this planet and I feel this really bad weather that we've had lately in Alberta was just her showing her power and her strength and saying people need to smarten up and stop using my body as a toxic waste dump like it's just a dump right so you know here are examples of how we can make this planet a better place we can think about what we buy we can think about the packaging that the stuff has. So if you have the opportunity to go to a place like we have a bulk barn in town and it, you can take your own containers there. And what they do is they weigh the containers and then you get to fill it with the product and then they, they weigh that container again with the product in it and then minus the, what the weight of the container was and then you just pay for the product. And so there's no plastic bags, there's, there's no waste. So it is my dream one day to I, I just really would love to have one of those zero waste stores or be part of that plan or whatever to change how we purchase things because I just think that so many places have so much waste and all these plastic bags are ending up in the landfill and some of them do disintegrate into just like a powder or something like that but the plastic is uh, petrochemical and it just does not it just doesn't break down. I mean, do we even need to use that stuff anyways? No, just bring your own bags. So, how do you treat Mother Earth's body? What do you do about it? What do you do? How do you how do you teach your family how to make this planet a better place and how to take care of it? My son knows, you know, in our house we compost. We use our own bags. We, um, what else? Well, we care for our, we care for our, our septic system. We care for our, our uh, water well because we live in the country we care for our yard we don't use pesticides and I you know my pasture is natural and it's not that pretty but one day it'll be worked up but I try my best to keep it as wholesome as I can because this is where I live right so if I'm walking down the road like the other night I went out for a walk and I uh, interesting I found a plastic bag in the ditch and I used that to gather the garbage on my walk as I walked. And it was really nice because 
like I moved here five years ago and people used to dump garbage like you wouldn't even believe. Someone had dumped like, I think a dresser like across the road from my house. And then in my neighbor's driveway, someone actually had dumped their garbage on his, the end of his driveway. And they were just using this whole area as just the dump instead of taking it to the dump because we all have waste cards to go use the dump because we live in the country around here. So it's part of our taxes, right? So we are so lucky to be living on this planet, but we're meant to remember that how we treat it will either have her treat us favor favorably or will incur the wrath of this planet. So that's, you know, she's responsible for pretty much all, it's how the energy is managed and how she feels. And she just thanked me for telling this story because she wants people to be more conscious of how they treat her. Because she says, yes, yeah, she's been very angry. And she says she doesn't mean to hurt the people. She wants people to pay attention that she said change is coming and she wants you to be aware that your actions will either cause something good to happen like dominoes or it'll cause something bad to happen like she said, like dominoes, bad dominoes on fire. And then she laughed. <laughs> yeah. So the final thing I want to close with is that without our planet, we are nothing. You know, many of us have had lives on other planets. I've done uh, tons of past life regressions for people and some of them had lives on the planets like Star Wars, had a, had a uh, client um, who had a life on Mars before it got so hot and close to the sun, like everything kind of changed and it made Mars uninhabitable, but she had lived on Mars and she had really enjoyed it. And so, we are so much more than just this physical body, right? We're a spirit and our spirit has lived in many different situations. I even had a hypnotherapy client years ago who had, <laughs> he wanted to know the kind of lives he's had and he wanted to know how, why he was so connected to the earth. So he had a life as a river in Colorado. He was a great big tree. His most confident life, he was a horse and he had many lives where he was a being that wasn't human and it kind of blew him away because he was a science guy but he was very connected to the earth and he lived at, I lived he worked at a golf course too so he was like always you know maintaining the grounds and making them pristine and everything but he really knew what he was doing so he got the answers that he wanted he got the answers that told him who he was or had been or currently was because I I I, I if I remember correctly that, that life is a river it was still happening. So that's called parallel life where we have our current life in this body and then we could have another life that's happening at the same time. So yeah, the final thing I wanted to leave um, this video about is that without our planet, we are nothing. And even though we've lived on other planets and have had experiences of different lives, oh, I'm supposed to talk about Avatar. So if you haven't watched that movie Avatar, oh my God, please do. It is so amazing because when you see, when he goes into that body's avatar and he becomes one of those people, those big tall blue people, he changes. Like his whole mentality changes because he's part of this beautiful experience, which is how I think it would feel for me if I went to the Amazon. I lived in Brazil for two years and I didn't have the chance to go. I could have gone to the Pantanal or the Amazon and I just didn't because our school didn't really have like the holidays, like the last school I had, we always had a, we had a long weekend every month. We would always fly somewhere, but it was harder to get out of the city I lived in because it took forever to get out of there. And often the connecting flights, you would get there with your connecting flight and you'd see your plane out on the runway and you'd miss it. So <laughs> it was like, nah. So I was, I lived in Brazil and I, I was so connected to the energy of that area. I'm sure I've had lives in Brazil because I felt like very at home there and people often mistook me for a Brazilian. They'd ask me questions in Portuguese, which I could answer in my second year. That was good. But this planet is so precious. We are meant to be her caretakers and we're meant to be living examples of how we are to take care of this planet. And I find so many people are so careless, you know, with all this takeaway, uh, all these takeaway food containers. Oh yes. Yesterday I picked up Dairy Queen, not yesterday, the day before I picked up Dairy Queen containers and someone had just thrown out their window of their vehicle and 
we have to be really conscious of how we treat the ground and what we are doing, what we, how we're active, actively taking part in keeping this place clean. And remember, you know, you are the reason you succeed, right? You are the reason things change. It's how you live and how you show everybody how to take care of this planet or how to take care of your body, or how to take care of your family, whatever it is that you do. You're the living example of you know how things are meant to be in your world. And if there's something about yourself or your world that you don't like, then you're meant to change it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching these videos. The next video I make will be on your mind, body, and spirit all combined. Thank you.